We are, thanks for watching part one. This is part two of the Glenn Rogers interview. Glenn will be joining us again shortly along with some awesome special surprises. That is the power of live hangout conversations. We are back and ready for business here on Google+. Plus. So, uh, Glenn, let me just get the YouTube link. Glenn has been a lot of fun, and I'm having a lot of fun so far. If you're watching, I appreciate it. And uh, Glenn is joining the Hangout now. We are. We do have liftoff, Glenn Rogers. Hey! Hey, we are lifted I'm off. Back. We're in part two. You're back. Is, you are back. You are, part this two. is part two. Part two. Yeah, uh, part two. Glenn Rogers hot shot part two. And I'm yeah. just going to post this, this new link here. And say we are live. Part two. Are we recording? Of course, of course. Of course. We're on the air. We are live. And bingo, bango, bongo is a Howard Stern thing, I think. No, I don't well, know. Welcome to what the too hot for TV version of uh, Hangout Conversations. The too hot, yeah, for TV. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. For G plus, too hot for G plus. There is no such thing. I don't think we could be too hot for G+. Um, I do. We will have some surprises at any moment. I don't know when they'll pop in. Uh, and, you know, these surprises are... Might be human. They might not be. I, I, I don't make any promises. Uh, Glenn had some interesting wish list people or, or others to bring in here. And, uh, yeah, I say the darndest thing when I'm multitasking, don't I? Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. So before they do get in here, and I appreciate everyone for from uh, that watching part two and that's, that's jumped over here, uh, Motivus Jones, Lori Days uh a lot of other people were watching, and Monica, and uh, just hit refresh here on my new Google Plus profile and see the new link pop up. There it is. And then let me click that and let me just post that to everyone else. That's like, what's going on? Where is the thing we were watching? <laughs> I don't get it, Matt Rappaport. This is so crazy. Why would you do this to me? We're just trying to watch a show in one place, and you got to go everywhere. There'd be all the play. Yeah, I am crying. There is crying in Hangouts. It's a conspiracy <laughs> theory. I probably posted the wrong link, too. I was like, what is the deal? I saw you said it's conspiracy theory in there. So, and I lost. Did I lose my notes? I'd be superstitious, but it's the 12th. It's not the 13th. So no, yeah, I'm a day early. Yeah, I'm a day exactly. late. Um, let's do a this or that real quick. A G4 real quick. Uh, it's really just a rapid fire kind of thing. Uh, no wrong answer. Uh, sometimes it's Sophie's choice. Writing or Google Plusing? Huh? <laughs> All right. So you. So I'm just. So it's. It's. Which one do you like better? Basically. You had oh, to choose. Uh, You're right. a desert island writing over Google Plusing. Okay, well, the Google Plusing is half writing. Uh, movies or games? Movies. Uh, shower, eat, or sleep? Uh, definitely sleep. All right, you know where I got that one from, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the Onion, the Onion, or the Daily Show? Oh, the Daily Show. All right, but it it sounded like it was close based on that. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm definitely a big fan of the Onion. Okay. All right, that was a G four. You did well. You won. You won a plus one. Plus one. Audio Yay! plus one. Yay! You win. And so you so you talked about movie rip. And you, you talked about game view a little bit. Uh, if you had to choose, could you choose between movie rip and game view? Oh, oh, that's. Oh, I, I, see, that's not fair. That's a blog fair. I write, and that's a hangout I do. Nah. I know. It's like two babies. Yeah. That, that's a real Sophie's Choice. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. That's definitely yeah. Sophie's Choice. I don't want to make you do that. Uh, so what was some of the comments where people were like, what what happened? Uh, one of the Google guys laughed at me and said, nice. <laughs> Literally, it, went, it just like all of a sudden shut down. Everything shut. I was like, all right. And then Windows was not happy with that, and I had to go through the safe mode. Or no, the other mode. Right. Uh, it was crazy. So my stream is full of tons of different kinds of hangouts, but it's all on Glenn Rogers. It's part one and part two, and, and I made you wait so long that you need multiple parts and conversations plus afterwards because I want the whole night. You know, there's sports yeah. chat, there's other hangouts on air. They were where were they in September or in October? Nowhere. Exactly. So I'm bringing it to you 
from here, from from Mad. I think like the first part is the Fellowship of the Ring, and this is the Two Towers. This is two, and the other one will be yeah, Return of the King, where we get where we finally meet up with everybody. Exactly. Exactly. So that makes although that probably is Two Towers anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, both. I was just using that metaphor. <laughs> You're like it wasn't literal. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Yeah, I although I do when I end Conversations Plus, it is like Return of the King because because I say goodbye like 20 times. I'm like, all right, we're gonna wrap up now. And then I and then I talk more and more and more. Yeah, and then yeah. goodbye. And then people. And then usually when we say goodbye, one there's always that one person that joins at the very end that thinks something's going on. And then we're like, so we're leaving now. Yeah. Goodbye, Frodo. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, Sam. Mr. Frodo, there's a time and a place for that. <laughs> um, I'm not even, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Sean Astin yeah. in, another, in another life. So what, are, so what are your, do you have, so I did have a couple of guys from flickchart.com a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. on that site, it's kind of, it's like choosing between movies. Do you know that site? Have you used it? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I was, watched the uh, interview the other day, and uh, I was going to check it out. Yeah, it's, it's a dick. Well, it's highly addictive. I know there's uh, people like to argue over whether it's what, to use addictive versus addicting. I like I use them interchangeably, but anyway, some people are more anal than others. The grammar police. Want I'm to glad you're not looking at me. Uh, no, not you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. No. Uh, but yeah. So to choose between movies, I was going to ask about your favorite movie. And that's why the flip chart came up. Not because I'm shamelessly plucking. Oh, well. After that, that, that plug, I have to plug the upcoming uh, Blu-ray of Jaws. Of course, you should. It's, it's my favorite design. movie of all time. Uh, so did you, how old were you when you saw Jaws? Uh, well, the first time I saw it was on television because I was much too young when it came out in the theaters, and I'm very happy because it would have... Ruined your yeah, life. Dramatic, yeah. Um, but yeah, first time I saw it was like, it was cut to pieces. Uh, I guess I was I was very young. I was one of those earlier numbers. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I've watched it. I, I can pretty much uh, lip sync to it now. Which is <laughs> <why> <laughs> the man's gonna lip sync to a horror movie. That's down out, down yeah. out. Well, it's more of an adventure movie, I think. I mean, it is scary. Uh, yeah. I think it's it's more of an adventure movie. And I've gotten into that with Flick Chart and with Jason, who does some movie shows. Like it just like. How do you classify a movie? You know, it's easy. In the, you know, when you say comedy, drama, like, get, like how in the old days when they were at video stores and they had categories, and you were like, why is this in the comedy section or why is this in this section? You're like, it's that used to happen. Never to you, Glenn. You're like, why is, is this is a comedy or this is a a spoof or like you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. In the original places, one time I found you know Schindler's List under a comedy, and I thought, Jeez, people. <laughs> I think know, that was a joke. Yeah, that was a joke. Too much but, um, Seinfeld. Yeah, too much Seinfeld. <laughs> you can never have enough. Uh, never. Yeah, well, it's kind of it, well, it's like Jaws because people say, "Oh, that's a terrible." That's, I mean, that's not a terrible, but that's a, that's a scary horror film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also an adventure. It's also about you know has some great writing. Hear that, Michael Bay? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Boring. I wish, wait, every time he says that, i got to drink some coffee. Thank you. Uh, yeah, get ready to do it again because it has flawless editing. Come on, do it, do it again. Uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, flawless editing and a shark that yeah. now doesn't look as amazing. but And people you care about, do it again. Yeah. Well, that's another movie where the trailer looks really amazing and has a lot to live up to because the trailer is showing all the visuals. But then yeah. you watch the characters go through the motions, you're like, anybody could be doing it. It's not like any specific characters weren't so drawn out, I don't think. Yeah, I think it was it was more of a concept film than a, than an actor film. You know, right. no offense, you know, Leonardo. No, no, take it. But that also hurts. That also I think hurts. Movies. Also has that feel where they where they're in a world that uh, that's not real. And uh, I feel like those char I cared more about those characters. Yeah, but by the same token, you say, well, it was visually dazzling, but it wasn't Keanu incredible. You never hear that. You hear the first part, but I don't think you ever hear it. Actually, I, would, I prefer Keanu in The Matrix to Leonardo DiCaprio in Inception. Is that amazing? Well, if you switch the roles, that would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't think I think I think actually Keanu probably can pull off Inception. I think Leonardo in The Matrix, I don't I think he's too small. Looks like I'm dreaming. Whoa, you know something like that. Right, right. That that might be funny. 
Although I think Leonardo DiCaprio departed and he was kind of small there, but they're going to chop me up and feed me to the poor. Or so whatever. Whatever he said. You can't let him do that. That's not good to, to do. I do. Leonardo DiCaprio is easier to impersonate. I've done it before. You know, he's, he's, done, he's done a lot of, you know, the similar, the crybaby, you know, like, you're so stupid, Rose. You're so stupid. And the whole, like, dad, dad. And then Gilbert Grape. And, you know, it's the same kind of, like, you know, it's like, wait, but one's supposed to be special. But anyway. I never thought of it that way, Matthew, but thank you. That's just... And, yeah, and Shutter Island and Inception, two different filmmakers I respect. Almost like the same idea of a movie in a sense, as far as like the character with the crate with the wife issues. And, and oh, everything. yeah. Okay, I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, I, and they were <laughs> they came out a couple of months apart. Uh, but uh, so Jaws is your favorite movie, mm -hmm. and is there a movie that by far is the worst one you've ever seen that just you just can't you wish never existed? Wow. Or that like you were like so pissed when you saw it, you're like, what the. Uh, well, the, the the last film I saw that I was I was amazed that it actually got got made. I mean, it was visually impressive, but there's like you know nothing going on here. It was called a movie called Sucker Punch. Um, yeah, it was directed by uh, Zack Snyder, who did uh, actually did a very good remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead, and he did <clears throat> 300. But anyway, and, and he did The Watchmen. Yeah, and he did Watchmen, which I Watchmen, not the yeah. Yeah, Watchmen was good too. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you're probably a fan of the graphic novel, right? Yeah. So, I to me, Watchmen, I didn't necessarily read the I read the novel after it, and I didn't like. I I didn't love it. I thought it was okay, but I, you know, I get the idea that it wasn't a superhero movie, but it was about superheroes. You know, I get that idea, but I, I don't know. I'm sure Sucker Punch was way worse. Yeah, Sucker Punch didn't have an idea of its head. And Watchmen was basically about uh, what would happen if if people actually wanted to be superheroes, and basically they would be uh, characterized as vigilantes. And what would happen if you donned a cape and actually went and fought crime? Um, which I think that's you know that's kind of what uh, the movie called uh, Kick Ass kind of talked about. You know what would happen if you put on the costume and actually tried to fight crime? Yeah, and, uh, and I prefer Kick Ass. I mean, I don't, even though it, it wasn't as deep, I I, I mean, and Kick Ass too. It's like everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's such an amazing movie!" And I thought it was good, and uh, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it wasn't so amazing because of the uh, the villain and his kid. Like the villain was so stereotypical, and the kid. Yeah, and I do that kind of ruined it. But Nicolas Cage and Hit Girl were cool, and but I did feel like the main kid that started the whole thing felt very Peter Parker Spider Man like, right? Yeah, it was very very Peter Parker. Yeah. And uh, it was like Peter Parker without the powers. And uh, say that five times fast. Peter but, Parker without the powers, Peter Parker without the powers, Peter Parker without the powers, Peter Parker without the powers. And I'm not going to do the last one because you were right. Oh. Peter Parker without the powers. You did, you did four, so you should get some sort of award. Plus I'll yeah. take a plus four. Yeah, I'll take a plus four. Take them. They're free. Um, but, yeah, I love movies. Actually, I was thinking earlier about that question. It's like... I love video games, but I've loved movies longer. So movies will always be near and dear to my heart. Yeah. And so, video games, for the most part, are a lot of them are cinematic now, even more than ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, now, and then movies are now becoming video games. It's like there are a lot of yeah. movies based on video games. And a lot of people say, oh, was it basically the movie just a guy going around shooting people? Like it's a one-player video game? Like is that, does that kind of ruins movies a little bit, right? Well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the directors of these the movies that are based on video games, what they don't get is the interaction. That's what made the video game successful. You know, you have the, the, the graphics and that sort of thing, but you have to interact. And if you go watch a movie like the, you know, the big screen version of Doom, you know, you probably have a lot of people in the audience trying to do their controllers, and you can't do that. I mean, it's just you sit back and watch. It's basically sitting back and watching somebody else playing the game, which is boring. So if you can, um, if uh, directors can make a film based on a video game but deliver something new that you haven't seen in the video game, yeah, you know, like they tried to do a version of Uncharted with <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. Um, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I was rooting for Nathan Fillion, but, <laughs> so, but uh, well, you know, it's, it's a sarcastic kind of, it's a, Devil May Care kind of character, and I'm sorry, Mark. It's just. It, and Mark isn't terrible. He has his moments, Mark and I. 
Actually, that Ted, the movie Ted, actually looks like it's probably going to be funny. The Mark with who? With Mark Ted, you didn't, you've seen the trailer, right? It was all over Google Plus. Uh, Seth MacFarlane is a talking bear. Mark Wahlberg, no? Maybe you hated it. Maybe you didn't see it. No, I thought I was dreaming that, but okay. Talking bear, really? Okay. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it sounds like it's not good, but there is. It's it's one of those. It's Seth MacFarlane, so it's going to be like Family Guyish, like really, but raunchy and 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 you know, f this and and tons of crazy over the line, over the top type of stretching the line jokes. Uh, but it should be good. Lori Friedrich is watching. Somebody want to make her hello? Lori. Hey, Lori, and then Monica and everyone else. Uh, she was asking, what do we think about the movies being re-released in 3D? Uh, we'll start, I mean, the one that comes to mind is Titanic being re-released in 3D. What? Well, yeah, well, I, I've heard this thing in Hollywood. There's a, there's a thing saying that goes around is, if you can't make it good, make it in 3D. And huh. that, that's kind of how I feel. It's like uh, if... If you are you against it. are you against all 3D or just the re-release? Not all 3D because Avatar was was quite impressive. Um, but if you're doing 3D just for the sake of 3D and has nothing to do with uh, the environment you're creating, the story that you're telling, it's like visual effects. You know, if you're doing CGI just because, hey, look, I'm doing CGI. Well, then you know, no one's really going to care. They're going to go. Is that like was that Care Bears in 3D? What you were doing was that your what the who that voice or was that Smurfette maybe? That was no. That was that was just a voice I come up with. I have I have a bunch of different voices. It comes from my acting, you know, stuff. Your acting is great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy your little voices. Thank you. You got uh, it. <laughs> a drink smirk. No, I don't think I'm, I can't go that far. Yeah, I mean, I think if the movie definitely we I've talked before. If the movie was me shot in 3D and intended to be in 3D, have at it. But if the movie like Piranha 3D, it they I didn't see it, but that's a movie I as cheesy as it it was meant to be cheesy, and I'm yeah. sure it's not a good movie. But I bet in 3D at the theater it could be a good time. And like I remember Freddy vs Jason, but I don't remember if it was in 3D. Uh, Freddy and Jason? No. No, Fred. I know Fred, Freddy's Final Nightmare was in 3D. I remember uh, seeing Friday that. Friday the Thirteenth Part Three was in 3D that one too. Yeah, and yeah. those are fun. Those are fun times. But but yeah, they. Right now, Hollywood is desperate to raise ticket prices because they're not high enough. 3D right. and IMAX, so so it's like we're releasing Titanic in 3D. You're paying us, I don't know, here it could be up to like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 bucks just for the movie. Add yeah. 3 to $6 for 3D. It's like you take, let's say it's 20 bucks almost for one ticket and you're a family of four. $80 to see a movie? That sounds ridiculous. And it's about yeah. popcorn. Yeah, there's, there's 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 no movie out there that's worth that much money. Yeah, hundred bucks with a family yeah, to go see really. the movie. No, not even Lawrence of Arabia, which is another one of my favorite films. I don't, I don't care if they release it and do it in 3D. I'm not going. I'm sorry, it's not worth it. You know, and um, and that's yeah. And studios want to make more money. That's why independent films are yeah. coming out more, and they're doing the on demand thing because they're like, you know what? Smaller films are going to, like, I think Bobcat Goldweight was on demand, uh, and he was also in theaters, this new one, I don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's like they go around and Bobcat, uh, some of the guy is fed up and he goes around and killing people, it's like satire, and uh, I know Ed Burns does Sounds that. Like satire, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ed Burns made a film recently uh, that was in one of the festivals, maybe, maybe it was last year's uh, Tribeca, and he just released it on demand, but people are going that way, and... But still, I think the on-demand price was, I don't know, I don't think it was, I think it was like 50, 40 or 50. That's still a lot of money for, I mean, I guess it's new, but unless it was 20. Yeah, I think um, they were going to do it for uh, Tower Heist. Um, they were doing a, if you, yeah, if you didn't want to, you know, go out and show up 10 bucks for the film, you could pay 50 and watch it at home. Uh, from what I heard, it wasn't either, you know, wasn't worth either 10 or 50. So they kind of lost on that one. But uh, I think really Hollywood's just kind of it's they're stretching. They're you know they're they're really they're they're uh, what's the word they're drowning. And uh, speaking of Titanic, but uh, <laughs> spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it happened a hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. And I like how they use it, that as an excuse. I mean, they would have released Titanic in 3D earlier. But they're like, you know what? If we do it on the hundredth anniversary, it seems like we're doing something historic. We're not, we're not trying to make a ton of extra money off a, a movie. And Alex Grossman, uh, and Stephanie Wanamaker in the in the thread, 
uh, talking about the 3D and the rip off, ripping off uh, people. Studios just want to uh, excuse to rip off studios. Stephanie said for each movie, and the glasses give her headache. And Alex was just agreeing with yeah. her. So, but yeah, a movie like Avatar again. If Avatar was not in 3D, Avatar is not that special. But the uh, the 3D was really because it wasn't just 3D. Cameron really gives you a certain experience because he filmed it in a way to emphasize the 3D versus yeah. Well, it wasn't the gimmick like, hi, I'm an Avi, you know, something like that. Um, it wasn't, you know, fire the, the rocket. It doesn't look like that. It was just basically... It wasn't like a wall. It wasn't like a Magic Kingdom ride. It right. <laughs> exactly. That's what you're trying to say, yeah. Exactly. You know, Jaws in 3D. So, but, uh, yeah, it, it, well, it, it's always been a gimmick. 3D has always been a gimmick. It always will be a gimmick. And once they realize that it's it's a gimmick and has nothing to do with great storytelling, right? And is that how you feel about IMAX too? I actually IMAX kind of makes me dizzy, so I've never really tried to go to IMAX. Um, I've been to a, I went to a couple of IMAX presentations, and it was kind of like the effect of putting the 3D glasses on. I did see both Christopher Nolan Batman in IMAX, and that was interesting. And actually, the second one he filmed in IMAX, and yeah. so. The build, like when you're in IMAX and he's like over the over Chicago, I think he used they use that city and they're they're over the right. landscapes. It was cool, and it, it's interesting. It's hard when you're watching a movie. Like to me, the movie the entertainment, the storytelling is really important and exciting. But as a movie maker and even as a fan, those other aspects, like some of the visuals and some of the other things that happen in the movie, are really cool. And so it, sometimes you might say like this movie was. Like Inception, like no matter how much I, I wanted to care about Leo, I still think like what the what they did with the with the visuals was pretty cool. You know? Yeah, it was amazing. It was, and once again, it was something that people had never seen before. And I think more movies need to come out where you know, uh, push the limits. Out where you know he was the last survivor. He was the only one that could lead the army. And I was like, oh my god, how many times have we seen this this plot? And Inception actually had something different to tell. Yeah, uh, I think we need more movies like that. And please, God, Michael Bay, don't make another transfer. <laughs> I did. I sat. There's what three now, and I or four. I don't even know how many there are. Three maybe. And I sat through not in the movie theater. But I think on cable, I saw a little bit of the first one. Basically, I think I saw he meets Megan Fox, and I thought that scene was better probably than any robot scene. And like that was, and then and then I think like I don't know. I didn't really see much of it. The whole time. I couldn't stomach it. It just in the same thing with GI Joe. I didn't sit and watch it, but it's like I don't know. It's like they don't even care. I see that the new GI Joe read in the entertainment magazine that. Bruce Willis and, and The Rock are in the sequel, which is weird to me. <laughs> like, I'm like, really? I'm like, all right, I guess they're burdened for cash. It's called a paycheck. A paycheck, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, it was a film they did a long time ago with Ben Affleck, and it was called Paycheck, and I thought, finally, they're being honest. Yeah, uh, he'll admit to that, yeah. Yeah, like, they, they called it Paycheck, so it was like, yeah. And actually, it wasn't amazing, but and it wasn't great, but I mean, oh, we talked about worst movies. I don't, did you pick yours? Uh, well, the most recent one was, oh, we got an error message. No, I'm good. Oh, hopefully okay. we crashed. Okay, we, oh, we restored the server. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Stop giving us messages, you! Speaking what? of hangout bugs. Um, no, that's <laughs> No, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, for me, I've said it before, like, Bill Cosby should never, should always have stayed on TV. Uh, Ghost Dad, uh, Letter Part 6 is my the worst <laughs> movie. Yeah. I mean, there are people that talk about it being funny satire. No. It is terrible. There is nothing funny about it. It's it was like and watching some of those, those movies and then I was dragged to Spice World in college. Uh, like uh, and there was the recent H two O, which is Halloween. Uh, yeah. And that was really bad too. And just like that movie, when I stood up, was like, really? That's the movie? Uh, well, it's like that, yeah. Well, Halloween H two O. At first, I thought it was like, what are the underwater and. Um, and, and it was like, no, no, it was, it was 20 years. And, was, and there was a lot of confusion about that. But uh, the, the winter part six and what was a ghost dad, the thing that's really disturbing about that is Bill Cosby is one of my, you know, comedy heroes like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, people like that. And he's a funny guy. He's a seriously funny guy. And for him to do something that's 
not funny. That kind of goes against the grain. Huh? That's that's blasphemous. Um, so I don't know. But uh, no, it is. It is. It it, it was pretty bad. And and uh, I just want to shout out to Lori Friedrich. Mama Matters is watching T Jallard, and uh, that's around the YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, hey, peoples, thanks for tuning in. We'll be doing Conversations Plus soon, just waiting on some of those surprises. And if not, then we will they'll catch us catch up with us in Conversations Plus. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the interesting about the show, anything can happen. And, you know, it's about talking about you and what you do. It's also talking about Google Plus. It's talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, we can actually get into the – oh, wait, Lori had one more question. She wanted to know uh, – where was it? Uh, your criteria for picking out the fabulously bad movie riff movies. What what is your criteria? Well, they, they have to have like we talk about a little bit. Yeah, they they have to have enough um, stuff going on. You know, there there has to be enough dialogue. Right. Uh, there has to be enough um, uh, really awful special effects. I usually like uh, Nikki helps me through it. I kind of skip through it. Nikki, which Nikki? Uh, Bernal, Bernal. She, she helps me work with the films, and then she's a uh, she's a regular on the uh, Sunday hangout. And thank you, Nikki. And okay. uh, she always helps me, you know, pick out the cream of the crap. And uh, so we look for films that um, have a lot going on, but they're still terribly awful. And we usually skip to the end, find out how it ends, and that kind of thing. Kind of skip around and make sure it'll be something. Do they have movie. to be god awful though? Can they be good? No, they need to be god awful because it's movie riff, and if you're going to riff something, that's that's making fun of it. So I, you know, I, I'm never going to do a movie riff on Lawrence of Arabia. That would just be you know. Mm -hmm. But you could do a movie riff on because there are movies that are either there are movies that are medi mediocre or or they're good, but you could still riff on them. I mean, because yeah, I mean, you could riff on a police academy movie. They're all not bad, but you know. Well, the trick to riffing on a movie that's a comedy already is uh, it, it's kind of like a if it's if it was a satire in the first place, then it's hard to make fun of it. I tend I tend to make the film uh, make fun of films that are unintentionally hilarious. Mm -hmm. Well, but the cult film of all time that does that is Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I think is a good movie, right? Yeah, that's an excellent film. But like, like with Plan Nine from Outer Space, you know, that was supposed to be uh, a horrifying tale of you know um, uh, aliens taking over the Earth, and it was incredibly laughable. I mean, you know, I was, and actually, I think it's coming out on Blu-ray, which is kind of fun because I like to see what kind of carpet they use for the cemetery. Um, Every time someone says "coming out on Blu-ray," all I can think of is "no." <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's all you think of yeah, George Lucas and his his lovely work. Darth Vader. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. It's don't sad. get me started on the prequels. I will, no, well, no. I mean, I think most people. I don't think. No, I don't think anyone really likes the prequels. Uh, I think that occasionally I hear people liking the third one mm -hmm. and saying the second one's so so or okay, but for the most part, I don't think people to like the prequels. Are there people that don't even like Return of the Jedi? Uh, so. You know, they have issues. With I, I thought it was good, except for the Ewoks. But, um, yeah. Was, but even the Ewoks, like, I'll take the Ewoks over Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, taste test, definitely. But, uh... <laughs> One of them is, is Jamaican coffee, and then... What? <laughs> Misa! No, no. <laughs> Misa said... Ooh, what's that? Ooh. Do a drunk what? a, a drunk. Ah. That that I don't think yeah. Wait, wasn't he was drunk in one of the movies at one point, wasn't he? I, was I when I was watching it, I wished I was. <laughs> um, but you know. I was praying for someone directing <laughs> me from Jar Jar Banks and, and, and all his hijinks. Uh yeah. G plus, I do a nine plus. Uh now that Google Plus is all out of whack or or those of you so hey and those of you watching again I ask, do you love the new Google Plus? Do you hate the new Google Plus? Are you so sick of talking about it that you don't want to talk about it anymore? Tell me I don't want to talk about it. I'm using it, it is what it is, and that's it. You know, that's fine. Uh but my nine plus, uh it's interesting, you're the first nine plus with these new changes. What is your and I don't know if you can still answer them, probably your favorite part of Google Plus is what? I pick my favorite part? Uh huh. Uh, probably the first thing would be the hangout because of the movie riff because I met some really cool people and it's just so much fun. Um, the other thing is uh, 
you know, I, I get to post my, my articles and things like, actually right now I'm, when I write my articles, I write it on Google Plus and then I copy and paste and put it on my blog. Um, because most of the, because I, I get response, I get a quick response on here, and sometimes the more people like it, then I go, I'll use it. So, um, so you know, it, it's 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 a good sounding board, and I like to see all the different uh, images and things. So for the cat gifts, um, but uh, <laughs> that's a that's a question I didn't get to yet. So yeah, <laughs> the cat, that's kind of, that's that's <coughs> coming up. Yeah. Uh, just a shout out quick to and Monica. We I hope that you you know she was going to be one of our surprises. I hope that you're doing the best uh, and uh, she's not feeling so hot. But yeah. we're, we're we're hopefully we'll get to hang out with you and your smelly face and feel and better soon. You'll get to feel better. But um, but we appreciate everyone that's watching. Appreciate and Monica. We've all become you know for those of you that are just tuning in or what is this or what's going on. You know we've been hanging out. The hangouts are all fun and center. We've been hanging out since the summer. A lot of us since the beginning. And, not, this, uh, not this hangout. Yeah, no, in this hangout, we've been sitting yeah. here since the summer. It just feels like it, but yeah. Forever, because we've had 50. Yeah. yeah, and then people are hurling. So I believe, you know, there was an hurling or hangouts in real life, and they're going and meeting each other. They've been one in D.C. and New York and South by Southwest, and there's another one happening right now in D.C. In fact, that's where Bobby Joe is, and uh, there's and people are going to Miami, and and There's where one. people have all the money to do this, I don't know. If you want to send me some money so I can hurl, and I'll do a broadcast and everything, you know. I mean, some people get have Kickstarters going, and I don't know how to do that. But, but uh, I promise not to use all the money to get drunk. I promise to use the money to buy some equipment better, that's better, and all that stuff. But, but yeah, no, it's interesting. Uh, and so basically, we all hang out, and then we met some of us met in real life, and some of the dynamics, and and this show, I, it's amazing. I almost. A lot of hangouts I'll have. I'll be like, oh, everyone at this hangout. I either met at New York or everyone at this hangout was been on my show or at some capacity, and it's really a cool feeling. Of course, I want high-profile people would be cool too. I like I want to have all kinds of people on the show, and um, but I really want to highlight people that aren't necessarily Mark Cuban. Although Mark Cuban, if you're not busy, if you have like 30 seconds, we could do a 30-second show. Um, I'll, I'll give him a call. You should. He lives near you, doesn't he? Oh yeah, we're we're practically neighbors. Practically. <laughs> hours and hours apart. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Hangouts is, it, by the way, it was the number one answer if we're playing Family Feud for favorite part of G+, Plus, based on the last 28 guests. Uh, what feature would you like to see most integrated? Now that we have all these new features and new desi designs, is there something that's still lacking? Uh, hangouts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there a feature that, oh, so you're basically, the answer is I'd like to see Hangouts work better overall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I do think they're, you know, they're one of the things that Facebook and Twitter do not have, and as such, I think they should, you know, they're, they're uh, they should work a lot better than they do now, especially you know when you're watching the Muppets um, on the oh Byron, hey Brian. Speaking oh my of Muppets, God! Speaking no. of Muppets. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, a, it's one of those surprises I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So this is what Byron looks like now. You can see the hair is coming back. This, in my hand, used to be on his face. Is that scary to you? This is his the, re the remnants of his old beard that he shaved on my show. Are you freaked out, Glenn? Yes. Okay, you should be. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's in a bag that I don't ever touch. I'm trying to fix things here. I mean, All right, let me, let me, okay, you, we hear you, so I'm going to mute you. It looks like a bag of weed. It uh, does. It's like redheaded weed. So you know, it, it's well, now you say it's like shavings from the beard, and I'm really scared now. That is scared. Well, actually, it was one of those things where he did shave. We shaved on my show, and then as a schemer thing, I wrote jokingly about uh, him sending me the hair or getting the hair, his his beard, and he and he actually he sent that, which is I don't get that freaked out. I I, I found mm -hmm. it was funny. And uh, and then he also sent me a zombie picture and, uh, and a lot of other cool stuff and uh, that he drew and did. Ah. So. So how's my favorite Walking Dead? How are you, Byron? He's muted. All right. Oh, there he's gone. I'm gonna mute his audio again while he's playing around. And uh, awesome. whenever whenever you're ready, Byron, and you're good, you can jump in. But Byron Apple is here to to draw and make people undead again. Uh. But that's anything can happen on the show. Anyone can pop in, and anything can happen. I'm scared. 
Uh, so when you think of Hangouts, what's the first thing that comes to your mind then? When I think of Hangouts? Yeah, is there like a word or like during your day, is there something that you're like, what, do Hangouts make you feel happy? I don't really know. <laughs> do you get that feeling that you, that you can't find anywhere else except from the bordello down the street? Uh, you, you know, it's a Hangout. I'm really not that emotionally attached to it. Um, I mean, it's, it's fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't live and die by Hangouts. And oh, I thought there was a, you were going to give us an epic speech from a, from a, a, night, a night movie or a, or, a, or a sword. I don't live and die by the Hangouts, but I... Well, I was going through, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to IMDB and look up a model art. <laughs> you can give me enough time, so... I'm sorry. Uh, is there anyone on Google Plus that you love that maybe isn't as popular as they should be, or, uh, or, no, uh, they're, they're, or all, they're all pretty much well. They're all popular in my book. Oh. Is there any? But is there anyone you wanna you wanna give a shout out to for? I mean, if you wanna shout out all the other Hangouts shows or or friends that are doing Hangouts that we haven't mentioned or or any any other projects. Well, I definitely want to shout out uh, Stephanie Wanamaker does this really great trivia at uh, 7 Central on uh, Mondays. Monday. And, um, and uh, Stephanie's great, and Alex Grossman, and Lori Friedrich, and Nikki Bernal, and let's see, Michael Anderson, and Ryan Schultz, and the, the list goes on. The list yeah. goes on. It's a big list. Cool. I need to do that someday. I do do. Mondays I started doing the plus payment show around 9 p.m. Eastern, so if I get my butt earlier, I will definitely do that. I'm just a broadcasting fool, you know, trying to get it, trying to go. I think I'm just a fool. So I love uh, cat dogs. Oh, cat dogs, cat dogs. You like cat dogs? Ah, uh, you hate cat dogs. Cat pictures, dog pictures, or animated gifts. Which one? Choose one. You're like I hate all of them. <laughs> Cat, well, I'm a, I'm a cat fan. I have a cat, so I'm, I'm a more of a cat person than a dog person. Okay. Yeah, not physically, but yeah, I mean, I like cats, but yeah. Wasn't there, I know there was the Planet of the Apes, but was there a movie where there was cat humans or cat, half cat? Maybe there was. There was cat people. Cat people, yeah. Yeah, cat people with uh, Nastasia Kinski. And uh, I'll, I'll avoid the, uh, you know, the uh, obligatory pussy jokes, but anyway... Oh no! I I've already cut. Yeah, I covered that in the past. The pussy. Yeah, person. I figured. So and, uh, uh, Tony Catano is here. Hey, he says you look. Hey, good. Tony. There's hey. another guy. There's another person. Hey, Tony Catano. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, Mystery Science Theater Five Thousand. Yeah, I definitely want to try it all. I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like there's so much going on and so many people, and it's it's really. If if all these shows, if my show could bring groups together and quote unquote clicks together and people doing different stuff, but there's only so much time in the day and and, and to get it all done, and I definitely will promote. Always share your hangouts with me. If you have a hangout on air, anything, uh, pretty much I'll share any of those hangouts. So and and get the word out about that. Sure. Uh, share, 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 reshare. If I can find out where the share button went, I will figure that out. Uh, do you still use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? You talked a little bit about using it, about being three networks. Do you use it less, more, the same? I use Facebook less and less and Twitter less and less. I, I keep tabs because I have some friends. I start off with Facebook, so I'm I'm still, you know, devoted to them. I still make friends on, you know, and they still trying to get them over to Google Plus, but I still haven't learned. Um, but yeah, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, I, I kind of go. Google Plus, and, and that's kind of scary. That's the undead coming. I, I oh, made it. okay. It was, yeah, they're coming. It's like Byron. Okay, cool. So one one addition to that. So with with the new look and the new feel, do you think that that would make people want to use Google Plus more than the old version, less, or the or it doesn't really change anything? I, I don't know. I'm I'm still kind of. Um, Sorting it all out, I'm still learning how to use the new Google um, because everything's kind of moved around. Uh, but yeah, I think if you know a person just jumped on, it, it would be a little bit easier to to access um, because they're they're familiar with like with icons and things sort of on Facebook and Twitter. You got those nice little icons on the left there, and I don't think they 
hear much about the white space until they start getting into Google, and then they go, well, what the hell's with the white space? But, yeah. but uh, no, I mean, it's very user-friendly. It still is user-friendly even with the new design. Do you think Google is, is really, like, in their head they thought, you know what, let's have the white space to see everyone complain and make memes about the white space. Like, do you think that they, are they that in tune that they thought that? Or, they're like, wait, how do we get more content and more of promoting the new Google Plus? Let's leave this white space so we will talk about and then make memes. And do you think that they're that, or no way they're that clever? I don't know. We're living in a world where a dog that sounds like he says, I love you, goes viral on YouTube. So I'm not, I'm not discounting anything. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, social media world. It's a meta, a meta thing. Do you have any, is there any G-plus story that comes to mind, Hangouts or other, that is your favorite or always makes you laugh or pretty crazy how, how it happened? How it happened? Uh, did anybody, did you ever, was there a funny story in the first time meeting someone or is there anybody that, that, uh, that makes you laugh nonstop besides your regular crew or your regular crew or? Uh, makes me laugh nonstop. Uh, I I don't know. There are too many people to name. We we don't have enough time. Too many people. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I I love people that make me laugh. I I like to make people laugh, but more more importantly, I want other people to make me laugh too. So make me yeah. laugh. <laughs> what do you, what am I clown? What do I amuse you? I gotta make you laugh. I gotta be able to stop. <laughs> okay. What are, what are you doing to me? This is like you know, uh, Hickey from Kinnicky's uh, home. Do I amuse you? Huh? Do I? Yeah, give me another. Yeah, you want a fresh one? Yeah. Good fellows, another one of my favorite films, by the way. So yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, and I didn't get to see Hugo 3D, a very different Martin Scorsese 3D, and and that was one of the few highlights of the Oscars when Billy Crystal was talking about you no know, whacking, no Bob De Niro, no Joe Pesci. Uh, Hugo was excellent. Yeah, um, I want to see. Really, you know, the 3D was good, but it wasn't uh, required. And Byron, what's going on here? Byron's Canadian. The Canadian connection, and maybe we'll just get him on Conversations Plus, which we're going to uh, go too soon because it's about almost 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll see. Uh, give him, we'll give him one more shot to get in here. Yeah. One more shot. Let me let me see if there's some more questions there. I got the. This is part two. If you're just tuning in, having conversations with guests. Do you like to be known as author Glenn Rogers, blogger Glenn Rogers, both uh, mystery man of mystery Glenn Rogers? Animal impersonator. Um, oh, can we, hear, can we hear some? Yeah. Um, Only best. Camera performance art. Um, no. Um, I just I just want to be known as a person. That's that's always the first step. In yeah. Knowing. Yeah. As, you know, as people accept me as a human being, then the rest of it just kind of comes into play. You are human. So yeah. Byron, Byron is trying again. We see his wonderful profile hey Byron. picture, and there it is. It's hopefully hey we'll focus in. Hey, and he drew that himself. Right? We're trying to sell your facial hair on eBay. So um, no, that yeah, was actually it. drawn by Nicholas Myers. Or your doppelganger, Nicholas Myers. Right. <laughs> now he's a cool guy. He does mods of people. Check him out, Nicholas Myers. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas. It's funny. So. Google Plus is an interesting place. When I think of zombies, I think Byron Ripple, Nicholas Myers, I think The Bidden, I think of The Walking Dead Circle, and Henry A. Otero, Jessica Wood, Tanya Rowe, Laundry Ward, Crooklyn Morrow, and a bunch of other people, Nicholas, uh, Rich, Nicholas Enigma, no, Richard, one of those. But yeah, so it's interesting, all that just for zombies, when I think of zombies. Uh, so there's certain, now we've been here long enough, when I think of a topic, I group so many different people uh, for that topic. And uh, there it is. There are the weapons of choice for Zombie Master, Byron Rempel, and he is going to play us the drums. No, he's gonna do a little, <laughs> do a little something. Do a little something, something. Little so something. you're gonna try to sell my uh, facial hair online, eh? Uh, what do we try? I think like the top bit is like five thousand pennies. Yeah. I don't know nice. how much. Raiders are standing by. Yeah, no, I haven't tried. Why would I do that? That's like a keepsake, like to be put in the Google Plus Social Network Museum when when social networks no longer exist. And you know, well, although so, hey, speaking of which, Project Glass, have you have you drawn anything to make fun of Project Glass, zombie wise? Yeah. Mm, no. That'd be cool I'm if you want to add. Not aware of what that is. So, pro what Project Glass is? There's a video is, and it's not out yet. It's Google has. It's it'll be glass, some kind of glasses, much like what 
Glenn Rogers is showing without the uh -huh. glass part of it. And it'll be like having, you won't need a cell phone or an iPad or anything because it's literally most, it, it, it'll have a camera and it'll show, you will see icons appear in front of you uh, and you'll be able to voice activate. We'll see how great the voice activation is. And I believe in the commercial, I saw them using the finger a little bit in air, but I'm not sure. And basically as you're walking around in life or in these classes, you can, you can actually like pop up the stuff on the internet and it, it'll show you like GPS directions. Right, right, oh, right, 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 right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've seen those. I was uh, always wondering what those were. Yeah, you, you know, like you put them online. You go, know, gee, I could really go for a wee, and then you go, wow, huh, see, and then the wee appears on your lens. It's dangerous if you like. It's dangerous if you think about the idea that people might be like not only being stalking, it could be like with pictures and video cameras, and the idea that you could hit on someone wearing those glasses, and like while you're while you're while you're like having casual chat. Your glasses are doing like the T1000 Terminator, and it's like all the information about them is popping up. And you're like, so I bet so y your favorite drink, you know, you order their favorite drink. They're like, how did you guess my favorite drink? You know, you that's that's well, kind of scary. Yeah. Right off the top of my head, when you're talking about lurkers and and people stalking, I'm just thinking someone's going to develop an app for that that will keep the person's head but will undress them in front of your wow, eyes. Wow, that would be you know what I mean. That would be <laughs> that intense. So there's only so many bodies, but uh, yeah, I know. Although, although that's interesting too. Can you imagine looking at a person, discovering who they are, and then like searching for any like lewd or naked pictures of them, and then it's like you could find one. I mean, these are we're like the evil. Of it. There is good uh, involved, although you know the idea that people are gonna bump into trees and bump into things, and and the idea that they could be watching porn or they could be gambling or shopping, like. In spending lots of money just with their eyes and their brain, without their like, it's that that's amazing. It's crazy. So. Stuff is going on. It's a different tell, world. Tell us what you're working on. Working yeah, on Glenn. Working on? working on Glenn. Glenn needs to be worked on again. I did I him a long time ago. Glenn is yeah, being well. re. You're being killed again and again. Yeah. And again. Only, yeah. I did you like what? Back in August or September? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometime last year, probably August. I think I've improved a little bit since then, so I might be able to do a bit more justice this time. That's good. Get all my facial features. <laughs> all, all the facial features. Yeah, I'm going to be removing facial features. That's <laughs> Chunks of skin. <laughs> so, do you, Glenn, do you watch The Walking Dead? I do. You I do. do. Are you caught up? I'm not. I'm not. You're not. Okay. Byron, are you, Byron's caught up, right? Oh, I've watched them all, yes. Yeah. So how far are you, Glenn? So we don't spoil. Did you read the comic at all? No, actually, I didn't know there was a comic. Graphic. Sorry, no. yeah. It's starting issue one hundred is coming out in just a few days or something like that. I was reading. They yeah. are making a video game too, so probably yeah. There you go. Which don't worry, I'll be writing an article on You'll that. You'll be writing on it. So yeah. what? So what is? We didn't get into video games that much. Uh, and actually, when you're done drawing, then we'll go into conversations plus if that's cool. Sure. And you could maybe draw someone else or not. Uh, so what is your fa favorite video game of all time? Is that a tough one? Or you can do it by genre. Wow. Favorite video game of all time. Pac-Man! What? No, not Pac-Man. <laughs> What's wrong with Pac-Man? Uh, all right, well, what? I feel bad putting you on the spot. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I did this. That's not nice. Well. So, oh, so just so just talk about some of the games you really like, the games you're playing well, now. Half Life, Half Life, which I'm really looking forward to when Half Life Three comes out. Never, um, but uh, yeah, the Half Life series was, was incredible. Uh, I like, uh, that was very cinematic. I like Halo. But, yeah, Halo. You know, Halo's good. Um, easy to please. I don't play video games much anymore. I don't get the chance. I got kids that take up all my time. Well, they love Super Mario Kart, though. Yeah, yeah, Mario Kart's fun. Well, see, when I play video games, since I write a you know fake gaming news blog, I call it research. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So now if I can get paid for it, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, wow, that's I've never been more green in my life. That's, that's nice. I like it's, that. It's your envy coming out. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, well, it's, a it's a little, it's a little gangrene, a little, little, little there it decomp. is, little decomp, little blood. So where, how, 
so how far are you into The Walking Dead? Did you finish here in season two somewhere, Len, or not not yet? Uh, Did you me that later? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the midst of season two. Oh, are you okay? So you've got in. Did you get? Are you still on the Sophia thing, or or no? You passed that. No, I'm on the Sophia thing. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, look, there's the zombies come on. Great. So so it's interesting. We up to, we had a couple of shows about Walking Dead, and the thing that's great about and Walking Dead, I believe, if not is not if not the highest rated cable show, it's up there as far as drawing in lots of viewers for for a basic cable channel, uh, and pretty impressive if it was a network show. Do you, it's definitely while there are tons of zombies, and that's the appeal. The idea that in a world like this, where where you can no longer be your, your regular moral self, you have to your morality changes and questions happen. And uh, it's really interesting in that respect. And the fact that The Walking Dead really refers to humans more than, than, than the zombies, too. What do you have, uh, like, what keeps you watching? Is it, is it the writing? Is it, is it everything? What's your favorite part about it? Well, it's, it's definitely the writing because, you know, it, they could have done something where, look, zombies. <laughs> but if you don't care about anybody, then, you know. But it's definitely the, the writing and the characters and... And they're they're kind of approaching it how it would actually happen as opposed to let's kick ass and kill all the zombies and that sort of thing. So it's it's dealing with well you know what if your friend turned into a zombie, that kind of a thing. You know if you had an emotional attachment to somebody and they turned into a zombie. That that's def that's definitely something very emotional. So what would you do if one of your friends was turned into a zombie? Just blow their head off. But yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's easier said than done. I mean, I guess if they really look, if they look like a zombie, it's hard to recognize. But you know, and there's something that there's a, and they're gonna really deal with. You didn't get there yet, but there's, it's gonna happen this season where they have to deal with stuff like that. So. Yeah, well, they dealt with that in the, the first season, so. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That's that's really looking good. I like that. Yeah, I, I like. <laughs> I kind of like the idea. I've always liked, and Zombie Land too. I like the idea that they're in, even though it's it's Earth or the world as we know it, although I think, like, I'm still not sure, because it seems to me like the world they created in the, in the in the TV show and maybe the comic book, there really aren't any cell, like, cell phones don't seem to have existed. It doesn't seem like they ever had cell phones, but you don't really know. Right. And uh, it, I like the idea that, that they can go anywhere at any time, and it could be, could be a zombie, or it could be empty, there could be plenty of food, there could be no food, there could be... It's, it's almost it's almost like it, like these characters are in their own little like zombie video game, right? In a sense. Yeah. In a sense. In a sense. Yeah. I like the that they're keeping it kind of unknown. Like they're not giving a lot of spoilers. They um, they don't ex let you expect that there's going to be zombies there when they when there are. It's almost almost unexpected, mm -hmm. and that's kind of adds to the whole creep factor of the the show. Yeah. And I think it's good that they aren't sticking so strictly to the comic and that they're willing to add characters and characters stay alive longer than they did in the comic or vice versa. And Some people in the comic have sex and then they don't have sex on the show and vice versa and things like that. And oh, sure, give it, it away. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, you know, I'm not watching Walking Dead. I want to watch it. And see yeah, I know. I'm totally spoiling it. Oh, spoiling oh, it. Yeah, all the details. Anything. No, I don't. Yeah. He's messing with me in my mind. Fine. Uh, but it, although it is interesting, I guess if you're going to die, you're like, F it, we're going to die, why not have sex and enjoy it? But the, I would imagine it's hard to enjoy, I know it's, a sh it's, it's not real, but I can't imagine enjoying sex knowing that you could, that's how you could die. Like, I, I would be... You haven't tried it, don't knock it, really. But, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine, though? I mean, I guess not. I don't know. It's all, oh, I don't know. And the idea that you can't trust anybody, that really sucks. You know? Well, it is an election year, so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Good point. We don't, we don't have to talk about that. In fact, that would actually be... And I don't know if you've done that, Byron, but seeing you draw, like, a uh, zombie... Zombamba and uh, Mitt Zombie... Oh, look, they have the perfect names! <laughs> <laughs> President Zombamba... Zombiamba and uh, Mitt Zombie. I like how you're bringing out my eyes. I like that. That's good. Uh, yeah, I should have actually brought it all the way up and had it hanging down here. 
But, if you're just uh, joining us, we're live with the author, writer, blogger, humorian, humorian, comedian, uh, Byron, I mean, Glenn Rogers. <laughs> 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 and then Byron Ripple is here too now. And the, and the zombie master. Yeah. Byron Ripple. Yeah, those were my hands. I'm doing that. Come on. Yeah, exactly. You have two cameras. This is my own facial hair. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. I have some dirt on my face, too. Yeah. Some craziness. So, hey, Should Byron, while you're here... Well, go ahead. <laughs> no, you... No, you... Hey. No, you. No, you. Hey. No, you. No, you. No, you. Off to you. I was just going to ask if you ever tried to attach that facial hair to yourself. <laughs> you even thought about it. I have not opened. I have not. I might have opened the bag to smell it once for the hell of it, but I have not <laughs> put my fingers in that bag. So. Okay, now I'm getting creeped out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure. Like, it, even though it looks like real hair, it could have been. I don't know. Like, it's possible it could have been a gag, and it was just like fake. But you know. No, it's yeah. real. I know. I realized that. <clears throat> Glenn's like, I gotta throw. I'm gonna hurl. Like you see, you know. Uh, so Byron, while you're here and you're drawing, have you what kind of experience do you have with this new Google Plus? And like when you first saw it and woke up to it, were you? Now, did you get wind of it before it rolled out, or when you first saw, it, you're like you didn't know about it? It was like, oh my god. Uh, no, I had no idea. I woke up just like you looked at it and thought, oh, it's changed. But I I roll with the punches, you know. That doesn't matter to me. As long as it works, it works. It takes some getting used to, but what choice do we have? Yeah, don't lose your head. <laughs> yeah, oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, we do, although they do listen to some feedback, and I've seen stuff, users' feedback, and they've changed things over time. But uh, I, mean, I get the point of what they're trying to do, and, you know, some of it works, some of it doesn't. There is an awful lot of white space, but then again, some of, my, some of the things don't get covered up when you're checking your uh, notifications or if a chat window pops up or something. Maybe and also, they'll, they'll definitely do stuff there, but I think that you know, for me, the I think I can accept it all. The biggest thing for me was just the idea that well, if I'm going to cover a lot of posts, if I want to look at circle, first of all, looking at circles, all of them, and accessing them easier, and it, I don't think it's easier to access them before they're all there. Now I have to get more and search for them, but not just yeah. that, but also the idea that, like I said to you, Glenn, is that now your screen, now I'm looking at my screen, and I only have one, maybe one and a half posts on my right. screen at any given time. But before, I could have like four or five or six, depending on how big they are, and I could scroll through. So if I scroll down once, I went through like 20. Now mm -hmm. when I scroll down once, I go through four or five or three, and con and like sometimes like a whole section of comments takes up my whole screen, and I don't under that I don't understand. Well, so. Andy, you, you know there's that extension where you can do a, a pause, where you can pause it, and I don't have to do that anymore because it's just like one comment is this, and one post is this, and so it's, it's very interesting. So it makes me wonder, yeah, it makes me wonder if they don't want us to be able to get through everything. And, and the fact is, like, the plus, the plus one and reshare and comment, or the plus one and reshare number was on this side, on the left side, and they took that and they moved it over to the other side. And in my mind, everything that's on the left is what you see first and your eye gets drawn to, and everything kind of like on the right of that, you don't see as much. And and they and they interesting how to take that data and moved it over here. And not only is it over there, but then you have to like click on it. You can't hover on it to see who plus one or shared. You have right. to actually click on it and then see a drop down. And then to get back to comments, you have to switch it. So it's not like you can see everything all at once like you used to be able to. And it's like I want why they why would they want to like make it? It seems more friction less than, than less friction and, and more work to find out information than you than before. I think they're so, testing us. So I think. Yeah, I think the whole Google Plus is like an experiment. And <laughs> yeah, we're on right. like unwilling pawns or willing pawns, uh, if you read the post. Yeah. Or willing zombies. That's looking good, too. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, I like Cliff Roth. You know, I'm going as fast as I can right now. If I was. Oh, take your time. Yeah, if you want, you can take a pause, and then we'll go to Conversations Plus. Or in, in if you either way, if that would be better. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we sure, can do that. Go Conversations Plus, then. We'll go to Conversations Plus to be a new hangout. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, thanks for part one, part two. I'd like to thank Glenn Rogers. I hope you had a good time, Glenn Rogers, even with all the power outages. And, and plug, please plug your shows on your website. You, have the sh you do the Shakespeare hangouts. You do movie riff. 
Oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly move you riff on that, uh, Saturday and Sunday. You know, I, I don't like to plug things. News of Sphere, uh, the News of Sphere, that's News of Sphere, WordPress.com, and <laughs> GameView, Fake Gaming News, Print to Fit, uh, that's uh, .blogspot.com. And uh, you can see me yakking on, on here. And, of course, my ebook, Selected Items from the News of Sphere, available on uh, Amazon and everything else. So... No, I'm just kidding. I was like, doing like, yeah, he doesn't like to plug at all, not at all. Look at that guy. Buy it, read it, learn it, know it. Game view as well. Yep, game yeah. view, news of sphere. Come see us at the movie riff. It's a bunch of fun. It's a bunch of fun in Circle, Glenn Rogers. Uh, and you wanna you wanna talk about Kenny Rogers, or you, or you don't talk about him only at holiday dinners, or we're not related. And um, and you can circle me, just don't do it in real life because it's just kind of creepy. <laughs> Unless you're getting married and you're Jewish, then it's okay. Good point. That's, that's that happens. I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah, well, there's. I just listen. If you beat me to the Jewish circling under the canopy riff meme, then tell you where to take it. Uh, Byron Ripple, thanks for dropping in. We're going to continue with Byron Ripple, continue with Glenn Rogers. Thanks, in conversation Byron. Plus, which will be a new hangout. And no problem. Invite a bunch of you. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Whether you watched it live or recorded, or you're watching this on Google Plus Stream, it just popped up. And you're like, oh, look at that shiny button. Boom. And you watched the whole thing, part one, part two. If you just watched part two without part one, you should probably go back and catch up because you want to make sure you know what's happening. You know, they... You, you need to watch both parts, right? Right, Glenn Rogers? Yeah. Will they? Won't they? You know, who's going to get shot? If you missed that stuff, you got to really go back. And yeah, we talk about we talk about if JR is new, there's a new Dallas, and if JR will get shot on that Dallas. And, it, it's not uh, like Lost, except for the last season, which sucked. So yeah, that's something we something we agree on. The last yeah. we, we'll talk more about that. That the uh, how pissed off we are about you know last season. In fact. I do do a plus payment show Mondays with Jane Ellen about pop culture, but maybe maybe I'll just say with you a little more depth about television. Or, and a shout out or, to Jane. Love Jane. Jane Ellen's great. And uh, great. let's and shout out to everyone that was watching as well. Stephanie Wanamaker, Lloyd Friedrich, Alex Grossman, Tony Catano, Joel Renner came by and talked about Google Glasses. Put a link there. Thanks, Joel Renner. As well as Motivus Jones and Sean. Is it Sean Cohen or Cowan? I was I don't know. By, Byron knows, right? Nope. All right. I'm in the dirt. Cowan, Cohen, I never know. I should know. Uh, Sorrow, Alex, Michael Carvel, Adrian Mowry, and everyone else that was watching, everyone over on YouTube, and Monica, Feel Better. The show is dedicated to you. Why not? Yes. And uh, she was going to be another surprise, but she will be on a future show. And uh, next week we have Scott Detweiler, who's a conceptual portrait photographer, Mike Cyril, Jane Ellen, Matt Gibson, and a lot of other people coming up. Check out Conversations. Dot com for all our upcoming guests and shows. Uh, until next week, uh, you can find all those Hangout Conversations, Conversations Plus, and Plus Tame Show Kicking and Plusing, uh, all fun hangouts on air on Google Plus, uh, YouTube, Pinterest. We, we jumped into Pinterest, even though Glenn Rogers is scared of Pinterest, and I understand it's another website uh, to deal with. Uh, but go dive headfirst into that new design. Uh, I say you should use that new extended uh, extension. That really helps me out a lot for your stream, so go do that. Good night, everybody. Good night. Drive Good night. safe. Yes, drive safe. Tip your waiters. All right, let me see one more. Let's end on I Am Zombie. You're watching Hang On Conversations. Ho, ho, ho.